Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Hey, Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Ephia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Grace to you, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayer. Hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast forward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints that the communication of thy faith has become effectual by acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus for we have great joy and consolation in thy love because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee brother so we work out another verse here as we move forward. We know that finally we saved. <coughs> and not just saved, but shows the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Now I know the fruit of the Spirit, there's no fruit, it's fruit. But this gentleman here is showing much fruit in his work. Not of his own accord, but by the Apostle Paul and the testimony written by the Holy Spirit recorded in the 66 books of our Bible and the Holy Spirit has inspired the scriptures as what we just read about Onesimus the slave owner so I don't care what you think what you what you have to do about slavery as wrong as it is it's one of the books in our Bible and a man that was a slave owner has great respect of the Holy Spirit and Paul, what are you going to do with that? The Antichrist is going to have slaves. I guarantee he's not going to treat them as well as uh, uh, Philemon has. I said there were good slave owners and there are bad slave owners. Love and faith. To the Ephesians, he also writes the same. Whereas I also, after I heard of your faith, in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints so when we look at James and we talk about faith and works now we are not saved by works we are saved by the pure merit of Jesus Christ the gospel that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to Scripture and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now Paul tells the, the Corinthian church, we can judge things, but we're not to judge people. I cannot say you're saved or lost. But with James and what we're reading here, if you claim to have faith and there are no works to back up that faith, I am by the authority of the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, I can deem you not saved and deal with you as a lost person. Finally, when he says, I'm saved, I'm a Christian, and you look at the works, you look at the testimony that Paul has to say about him, it's not from Philemon's lips, but other Christians, the Apostle Paul, there is no doubt that this man is saved. There are plenty of people, more people that profess to be Christians to me, that I look at them like, yeah, right. 
than those that say they are Christians and have proved to be Christians. Hebrews 11.1 1, Faith is what you hope for and not seeing it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So you're hoping for something, but you haven't seen it yet. You take a child. Christmas is coming. Mom and dad is telling him he, he's getting that bicycle he wants. Now, he's never seen that bicycle unless he's peeked around the road, but he has not seen that bicycle. He has got faith and belief that mom and dad have bought that bike or are going to buy that bike. And on December 25th, that is going to be right by the tree. You say he believes his mom and dad. So what is the works associated with that? Well, number one, he's going to probably try to be a good boy so he can earn that bike. Number two, he's going to get excited and more excited as that day comes forward. And there be maybe other things he will do to prove that he trusts his parents. The love and faith of all our lives must be in Jesus Christ. Then to the saints. Now this is not something, oh I love Jesus. Oh how I love Jesus. And brush off the saints. Brush off the Christians. Your brethren in the Lord. You help them. Philemon loves Jesus and he's helping the brethren. He's refreshing them of whatever needs they have. Okay, here comes Onesimus, a runaway slave. He is now part of the children of God the Father, just as you are, Philemon. And Philemon, as you help other Christians, as you have refreshed other Christians, here comes another brother. In God. Remember what you've done. Remember what your testimony is, finally. Because now this man you hated or angry with, whatever it is, now he's your brother in God. So see, Paul's giving the testimony, and Paul is building up finally. He has not told him about the story of Nazareth. He's like, You're great, you're wonderful, finally. The great testimony that you have. And then he's going to drop the Onassis bomb on him. Loving people doesn't come easy. That is why it is the fruit of the Spirit. Man doesn't even know what love is. Man does not know love because the Bible says God is love. And no one that is not saved does not know what love is because they're not of God. They're of their father, the devil, John 8, 44. They're a liar and they're murderers. So don't stand on the television screen. Don't bring over the radio. Don't go before that, that priest, that pastor, or whoever you're going to marry and say, I love you because you don't know what love is. Now, as far as the Christian, where does he get his love? Where does he get the knowledge of love? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That love comes meeting Calvary. And that dying Savior who died for our sins to show the love of God. And coming out of the empty tomb where the stone has been rolled away to walk in God who is love. And that takes growth. As we grow as Christians. Now, we start out, man, we are on cloud nine when we're saved. And as we get to meet more and more Christians, as we get to see more and more things going on, and it's like, oh, boy. We start seeing Christianity, not the world. We start seeing Christianity through the, the glasses of the Bible. And then, yeah, there are things wrong. And then we got to have the love to God stepped in there, that God's love, God's long-suffering, he has not turned us into a pile of smoking ashes. Though as we've done God so wrong, and yet he does us so much mercy and grace. Now, as a Christian, i got to show that grace too. i got to show that love and mercy that God showed me. And I can't know that love, grace, and mercy 
except I know that love, grace, and mercy that came from God from saving my soul. True love is of God and is God. The world's lust, the the world's love, love, love is called lust, or even taken advantage of. There is no greater love than the sacrifice, as I had read the greater love of John 3.16. And the world don't know that. Matter of fact, the world rejects that love. The world will have nothing to do with the love of God. They want the love that Satan doesn't know the love of, what can I do for you for me to get something? You see? You know, some of those great words that come out of the world's love is, you know, if you really love me, you'll do what I want you to do. Colossians 1 4. Hearing of the faith, what are people saying about you? Now, I'm not talking about you as a Christian. Look at me. Look what I've done. Let's see, see what I'm doing. See what I'm doing. See what, you see how I'm doing this? See why I love these people? No, I, we're not talking about your big mouth. We're talking about what people are saying about you. Now, if you're a true Christian and you are trying to do your best, the Bible says, all that live godly shall suffer persecution. They're going to hate you. Christians are going to hate you. The world is going to hate you. Okay? And they're going to lie about you as Jesus had people lied about him. And he was sinless. But what is the character that you have impressed on people around you? What does your boss think of you? Are you a loafer? Does it take you forever to get started? Do you even show up for work? Do you show up for work on time? Do you do your work or do you do your work and? Are you reliable? Are you dependable? How about your spouse? Are you the person in that family that you're supposed to be being? Your children, are you an example to those children for what God wants to be for those children? Or have you failed? What's the stores you shop at? What's your character there? What's your character with the people that you meet, the people you work with, your co-worker, your pastor, the deacons of your church, the people that are going to church with you? What is your character? What do they say about you? It's not what you say about yourself. Everyone can think high of themselves, but what do other people say? We don't even know how fine even Max. But God, I mean, Paul's lifted him up through the Holy Spirit recorded to us. Does your faith give testimony to Jesus Christ? Does your testimony, your character, give testimony to Jesus Christ? Or to retirement? What is your hope? What is your talk? What is your plan? When you're at work, that guy sits down, he reads his Bible, and eats his sandwich, and, and he says, happy, and, you know, he has problems, you know, we see time, you know, he's, he's down because he's got problems, but he's cheered, he's happy, he's wonderful, he's got something. Oh, all that guy does, he comes to work, oh, I can't wait to get out of here, can't wait to find another job, can't wait to retire, oh, blah, 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 blah. And every idle word, man shall give an account. Or a cruise? You can put a cruise ahead of Jesus Christ. Oh, that's all they do is cruise. Oh, they're a Christian? I had no idea. They talk about cruises and and money and I didn't know they had no idea they were Christians. They don't act like it. Or any other worldly pleasure if 
you were to be charged as a Christian and brought before a judge and a trial to be set, could the prosecuting attorney convict you by the testimony and evidence you are a Christian? By what you do, what you say, what you think, and your character. Could they prove to the court that you are saved and God knows you? Would you walk out of that courtroom guilty with evidence or a hung jury? We, well, we don't know. Lukewarm? Or we had no idea. We didn't know he was that. Because of your life, because of your love to Jesus Christ, can God use you as a vessel, found in Corinthians, to the lost and dying world, the sinners, on his way to hell, seeking a way. If there is someone seeking God right now, oh God, life is just terrible it's miserable I have no hope Lord if you will show me something some I don't know what whatever you have for me at that moment God could, could God say I have this particular man I have this particular woman and if I put them in their path they're going to be faithful to help that man by Jesus Christ or Man, if I put them, if I put that person in that path, man, they might take them fishing. They might go to the ball games. They might have worldly pleasure, <coughs> and I'd be lucky if I even get Jesus Christ to be mentioned in that conversation. Where would you stand with God, as far as your testimony? Let's say you work. Let's say you work at a job. Or you got a membership somewhere, a gym, okay? Job or gym. And let's look at your, your testimony real quick. Let's take another lost man. Whatever has been dumped on him by the world, he's had it, he's given up, and he's seeking God. However, whatever, I don't know. But here's a lost man, and if he were to be shown the way, he would get saved by Jesus Christ and get his name written in the Lance Book of Life. And he goes to work or he goes to the gym. Okay? You're there. You happen to be there that day. Is your character so built in Christ in God that he will single you out of anybody in that building that you're located? What do you say? Come here, listen. Your character, who you are, you're honest, you're right. You've got to be somehow of God. Or even still, listen, I know you go to church. I know you worship Jesus Christ. I see you pray. And you've got something, and I need it now. And then would you be that vessel enough to open up your Bible, because you've got to have the Word, and lead that person to Jesus Christ, the saving grace? Or would you hump her down? Oh, no, yeah, no, this is not the church house. We don't do it like that. Now, as I hear Christians tell me all the time in the street ministry, that's not how you do it. Could lost sinners that need a hope know that you have that hope and can guide them in the way, the truth, and the light? Or they have no idea? Or are you just a lukewarm Christian where uh, he goes to church, blah, so what? So. A lot of people I know. That communicating, conferring, or delivering from one to another is your life being effectual, producing effect, or results from response to lost men. Is there something in your life missing in there? Is your life so different from dog eat dog? Are you a light upon a hill or under the bed? 
Has anybody ever asked you, what is it about you? You are different. You are too happy or you're just too weird. Is that your testimony? Or do you go to work, mm, it's Monday. Anybody, mm, it's Monday. You, you, you don't have the right character. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. I've had bosses testify of me, of my character at the job. I had a boss one time tell me something I found that if it had been any one of his other drivers, he would not have expected to see that be brought into office and returned to its owner. I had another time when I was working for a place that one of the customers called up and and said that I cussed him out, was screaming and yelling at him, and, and gave him the fifth degree up and down. And the department manager of the department I worked at, who only, I only knew this person, just, you know, they come in in the morning to get the reports and they go to the other office. That person was on the phone with that customer. And this is what was told to me, and I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet, I'm talking about character. So may I not lose no rewards in heaven, but here, here's the character. If any driver that you just said were to have been mentioned, we would take these we would take this matter at hand. But the fact is that you mentioned Styley that he did that. And I don't remember the rest of the conversation, but let me say as far as this outline, that was off character for him. He would not do that. And the person that was on that phone ended up giving up with, with that company I worked for, and I ended up still having my job. When those charges were brought against me, no matter how much they, they hated me, did not like me, when it came down to... No, we don't believe that. What are you doing? What is your conduct? And I've been in trouble with the workplace many a time. And there have been times that I go to the boss and say, Boss, I just did something wrong. Now we can fix it, or I don't know how to fix it. Or this is a serious consequence that I just did. And God and my boss would work it out. See, you got to realize, when you step out and I'm a Christian, everybody's going to watch you. And when you step out to be a man of God, a true child of God. They're going to want you to fall. And they will look for you to fall. Another time I was at work one day. And it was just one of them bad nights. It was just terrible. And rushing and bushing and just things got heated. And I was in, I was in loading. And I don't remember the complete detail. But I just said, you know, I said, this sucks. And my boss popped his head in and he said, what did you just say? I said, this sucks. Bad night just for him too. And he looked at me and he says, you cussed? You're not supposed to say that. Styley. And I'm saying to myself, Wait a minute, you guys use Jesus' name in vain in every four-lettered word you can. I use the word suck. And in the context, it was wrong. But you see, as far as the standard that they see me in Christ is, you don't use our words. And the closest word that we can get for you to say that comes close to our words is suck. Wow. And to that, and this, and, and it traveled through the whole night, and you won't believe what Styley said. I'm like, 
And that's the character. And that day, one of my bosses, well, you do have a bad time, don't you? Yeah. I mean, do you think I, I'm floating? Do you think everything you go? And he realizes, you know, and he says, even after all that, that trouble, and it was, like I said, it was a trouble night. He says, well, you handled that well. And then, you know, and there was extra things I'd done and stuff like that, and he thanked me. Is that your character? Does the boss have to call for you to do something, or are you there? Okay, do you step in? The last job I had, they, they didn't tell me. They told me that they fired me for something. I don't believe it, and someone else doesn't believe it. They, we believed that I was fired for being a Christian. And my wife asked me, she says, well, did you pass out gospel tracts? Did you talk to people about God when you're working? I said, no. I, just, I passed out gospel tracts in the cafeteria on my lunchtime before I worked and after my shift. I said, somebody would ask me about God, and I'd give them a quick answer, but I'm still doing my job. You see, I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to witness for Jesus Christ, but I don't do it on the employer's time. I don't take from his time. Now, there was times that I drove a delivery van. I would have somebody in the passenger seat as I drove or vice versa. All right, while we're going down the road, we're not working. We're not doing anything below. Just going to the next stop. I would talk about Jesus then. But if I had to load the van or we had to unload the van, I wouldn't be talking about Jesus at that moment. I'd be doing the job at hand. Now, there are some Christians out there, oh, yeah, okay, you witness Jesus. But your employer is not making a profit off your job. Because that moment you're witnessing for Jesus, you are being paid. To do service and you're not doing the service so you're you're being paid and the company's not getting anything back or even still if you spend too much time at the coffee cooler you spend you come back late off your breaks you come in late you leave early that's not a good character there are people who are hurting in your church and you're not even trying to pray for them as we talked about prayer and if God has given you a little extra means, which, yeah, I mean, some people, oh, money, money, money. You can think whatever extra means can be. If you can help them out, why ain't you doing it? Because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by the brother. Philemon is helping other saints out, whatever their needs are. He's trying to meet them. And he's not doing it, say, everybody look at me. Most of the work I do for other Christians, I, I do it anonymously. I don't want them to know it's me. Then every good thing, not, please, Lord God, don't count me as, as blowing my own trumpet. I don't want, just trying to give you examples. Then every good thing that is of and is about you is Jesus Christ. That paycheck is not from the employer. It's God. TGIF. Why do we got to put it in abbreviations? OMG. That's what the Jews do with God. It's capital G slash, uh, dash D. They don't spell out God. I'm going through a hymn study and I'm going through the hymns. You know how many times God and Jesus is missing from hymns? Why can't we say, thank God for Friday, thank you God for my paycheck. And Lord God, let me bow my head and, com and confess the sin is I did not earn every minute of this check. And then we give God gratefully, wonderfully, an offering out of what he's given us. How about that? 
Thank God my employer paid me, and you don't give nothing to God, and you blow it, and so I'm gone by Monday. Oh, Monday. <laughs> yeah, you have no praise for God. You have no joy, and you expect everybody in your office to come in and say, what do you got? No, you got the same lousy, rotten Monday we got. Man, it's Monday morning. You're, you're bright and cheerful. You don't look like you don't have a hangover. Well, I don't drink. You don't drink? Is it Monday? Man, this is a wonderful day. It's Monday. It's a great day. What's wrong with you? I'll come back and talk to you after I had five more coffees. Then I, then I think I can hand you. Then I take up the towel. Then I can talk to you. You're too cheerful. You're too wonderful. Why can't we thank God for the jobs we got? I'm unemployed. I'm looking for work. And yes, I griped and complained about jobs I had. But I also thank God. And I prayed before the job began. I'm a sinner. I gripe and complain, okay? I ask Jesus to, to forgive me about that sin about the job. But I also thank God for the job. Not everything in this life is hunky-dory, but give thanks for every. Even, Lord God, I'm sorry for griping and complaining, but I have a job, and I'm hopefully going to get a paycheck for it. And then, Lord, thank you for the check. Did you thank God or your employer? You're not good. There is none good. Don't think, oh, I deserve this check. No, you don't. You know, Jesus gave us an illustration in the Bible about a group of men that went to work in a man's vineyard, and all they got was one penny a day. And they griped at the end of the day because those who've been there for an hour got the same pay for those who've been there for 12 hours. There are people, so I'm telling, I don't know, but I'm not over it. There are people who don't make no money off us buying riches of clothes we have in America. Now, I don't know. You may know more than I do. But for, they say that for me to buy my clothes at a particular store, there are people who are suffering from no money, no food, no living expenses in whatever country. I don't know if it's true or not. But I can thank God I'm wearing clothes. You are not watching this video with me naked. And you very thank God for that. You will not want God to have me naked in these videos. But do you realize what Paul wore? Paul, most of his life, even says here, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. He didn't have the best clothes. He had whatever clothes were probably on his back, whatever rags they would give him, if they gave him clothes. They would not dress Paul like they do the correctional systems of America today. I don't think Paul ate high on the hog as a saved Christian. I don't think he had the best foods. I don't think he would go to the uh, to restaurants often. How about us as Americans? Boy, I've been widely blessed on that one. I've been over-glorified on that one of food and dining. Let me get up and show you a profile of the spare tire I got. I've been blessed. God has blessed me. I have never gone a day in my life without a need. As far as food or drink. I've never had to starve. Thank God. I'm praying God for my budget for next month that we can survive. I ought not to have a full kitchen of food, but guess what? God has given me a full kitchen of food. Thank you, God. Not thank you, grocery store. Thank you, employer. Thank you, government. Thank you, Styley, for giving me what I like. No. That's what the rich man said. Oh, I got needed. Oh, man, I'm going to tear everything down, build new barns, and t tonight your soul is going to be acquired. I thank God. I thank God that he has given me an opportunity to go to lost men with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's not me. That is out of my character. Some people think I, I do love preaching. But it's not me. It's my love for them that they don't go to hell. Your effect or effectual on others can only be knowledge from God and not from your good. 
Your faith ought to bring others to know that it's not you. Or it will be a false or pretending that someone else is controlling your life. Now, like I said, that night there was just a frustrating night. I don't know what they thought of me. But they had the kind of, now I never had a bad life. I seem to be this one above it all, and they realized that night, okay, I'm human. But I got something that they don't. In that place, I, I would leave gospel tracks while I was on duty. I, there was a place we, we get uh, with candy, and the rappers had scripture on them. Oh, they, they devoured them things, but they got the scriptures. At Christmas time, I'd give my, because my managers changed often, I would get my managers a Bible for a Christmas gift, and one of my man, managers really appreciated, I don't know if he read it, but he really appreciated that someone thought about giving him a Bible. Well, wait a minute. Isn't that odd that someone you give me the you thought to give me a Bible? And the character I try to live was try to Christ, I'm there for you. And people are watching you and they're wanting you to fall. And yet they have a great regard for you and some may lie about you as Peter said but let there be let their lying be how can I say it to God's credit that you are not the lie they are saying you're not living that lie but they're doing it because of Christ liveth in you as they lied about Christ. I mean, come on, really think about it. Jesus Christ, sinless, never done anything other, nothing wrong. Yet those Pharisees, that Sanhedrin could find people who could lie about him. And the problem was the lies lied against the lies against the liars against the lies. You read that? It said that their own testimony could not agree with each other. How is your life, Christian? We ought to step away from finally and move the mean, nasty slave owner, and we should look. He is a dedicated Christian that would help you out. If there's anything you could not say about Philemon, as far as Philemon's name went in the known world, you would you would overlook the fact that he had slaves. You would say he was the Christian to know, and he was known of Paul. And boy, did Paul speak good about him. What did Philemon have to say about him? He says nothing. Other people say it about him. We need to realize that the good in our lives is of God. Because without God, well, there would be no good. I don't know who I would be today if I was the lost man that never before April 21st, 1987. Had I never got saved, I wouldn't be doing these videos with you. And with the troubles and issues that I've had in my life, of the world. Just tell my wife. There's always been a year with a hospital. Since 2008. Whether my wife, me, or my wife. My first wife died of cancer. My wife now and I have been in, I was in the hospital earlier this year. I was in the hospital last year. She was in the hospital every year. One of us has been in the hospital. My daughter, 15 years old this week, has spent most of her life at the side of a hospital bed. From her mother having cancer and dying. From her father having problems with his feet, with diabetes. With her, her mother now, with, with all kinds of other problems. And yet God is good. And I don't know where I would be if I didn't have Jesus Christ. Before I was saved, I had my own Bacardi. Okay? 
Every party would bring my own, and I'd bring a bottle of Bacardi. That was me before I was saved. I smoked cigarettes, cigars, or pipes. I was into marijuana a little while. And I'm not going to tell you the vile other... And I, got, I have vile, wicked sins that are under the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't drink no more. I don't smoke no more. And I don't do any drugs. God has cleaned me up. And God has brought me to a place where I am in 2017 with all the trouble, with all the problems. God has given me the goodness that I don't need the world's crap. Some of you may not like that word, but I'm sorry. And it's not me. It is God that is good. And I'm talking about our actions, our deeds. What and what is not good? It's sin. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And that's what needs to be repented of. When I do sin, that's me. And I need to repent of that sin and I need to get right with God. And I can never, ever say I do not have sin. 1 John 1 9. We got to confess our sins because we're not good, we fail. That as Solomon Paul wrote, there is none good, so don't take or give God's credit to yourself or to anybody else. Show the world that you are where you are by God and His Son, Jesus Christ. And all they that live godly in Christ Jesus are going to suffer. I want to thank God for this paycheck. Don't you mention God here. I already did. What are you going to do? I'm off the clock. <laughs> and if they fire you rightly, serving God, and God's got to take care of you, doesn't he? Now, don't you do something stupid. Don't you go be doing a Christian on, a, on a, your employer's time. Now you're stealing. Thou shalt not steal. And let him that steals steal no longer but worketh. You got to do things right. You got to do it correct. You got to do it good. Don't be stupid. Don't stand out in the middle of the road and somebody hits you. And they, oh, now I'm going to sue him. Well, you're the idiot that was standing in the middle of the road. You didn't belong there. So, uh, yeah, Solomon gives us a great thing in the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a time, and there is a time not. Learn that. Job, in the first two chapters of his book, never blamed God. And we see that God gave Satan the, the, the permission. And he even gave God the glory. Ooh. Even if it's the devil. The devil made me do it. In the life of both Job and David, God allowed the devil to do. And Job needed a lesson in his own merits, and Israel was just going too far away from the time of David. God was the author. But as a father spanks a child for the child's actions of doing wrong, it is a lesson that is needed. For correction, Hebrews 12, I believe, 12 or 13. What does your character say about your walk with God? Do people even believe and know you are saved? Or are you, I didn't go to church. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, there's just something about that guy. I don't know what it is, but there's just something about him. What's your character say? If you, if God were to have put your life on trial in a courtroom, 
could that prosecuting attorney come up with enough evidence, enough people to say, yeah, that guy is definitely a Christian? But there's something about him. I don't like him, but you know what? At least I lie. He's honest. He's hardworking. And he's caring. And he, Peter said, if they do lie about you, let their lies be lies and not the truth. How's that? 